What's going on everybody? This is Lag on Lock here and welcome back to the BYU Cougars Dynasty here on NCAA 07 for the PSP. Let's go ahead and take a look at the ESPN magazine for this week. Texas has the home field edge against, well, I hate when it does that. Texas has the home field edge against the number nine ranked Buckeyes. Let's go ahead and take a look at that. So as you can see guys, both teams are one and oh. And this is gonna be a very close game. You know, both of them are seem pretty evenly matched. The only thing I will say is that Texas might have an edge here because they're ranked number six in points per game. And then they're ranked number one in turnover differential. So that is pretty good. They got 7.0, man, that's crazy. But yeah. So guys, in the last video, we were able to defeat the Arizona Wildcats 20 to three. Not a bad first game to start off this dynasty. You know, uh, it was pretty tough. You know, playing on the Heisman difficulty is pretty tough. You know, I hate how it has that. Uh, I like to call it the pinball uh, mechanic, which means like when you're trying to tackle someone, they'll just bounce off of each other and it's, it, you don't get a tackle. But anyway, the player of the game, we have Collins from Arizona who had a tackle, which ended up being a tackle for loss. And it was a sack and he also got an interception. For us, we had Sessions who had 18 carries for 75 yards. Uh, a rushing touchdown and then he had 14 receiving yards and he had a receiving touchdown as well so now guys we're going to take a look at the end season recruiting board which i failed to show you guys in the first video you know plus we had a bye week in week one so it kind of messed me up a little bit but here's who we got left we have dominique cook the free safety 6'3 180 pounds from campbell california as you can see, his interest level went up with us, and I put 100 points into him because Evans and Armstrong are no longer interested in playing for our team. When asked about the Arizona game, he mentioned our defense. So he has a C minus uh, field awareness, C in hands. He runs a 40 at 4.41. His verticals are 39.8. He squats 445 pounds, and he benches 265. So as you can see, we're number one on his list now. When I, uh, I think. When I were uh, last last video, when I was checking this out, I think we were number six on his list, but that's a big boost to be number one. And then we have Drew Evans, the wide receiver from Fort Worth, Texas, who's no longer interested in our school. But I'm gonna keep you guys updated on who, uh, what school these guys signed to. Uh, as you can see, the other schools on my list were recruiting me a lot harder. So you know, it don't really matter. I'm not gonna go over his field awareness and all that stuff because we can't get him but he really wants to go to Texas or Texas A&M. And then last we have Terrence Armstrong, the cornerback uh, from San Antonio, Texas. At the end of the day, I just can't see myself going to BYU, which is okay, you know, we're not a ranked school, not yet, of course, but you can see he wants to go to Texas or Texas A&M. And also TCU, they're moving up and Houston is moving up as well. So now guys, we're gonna take a look at the top 25 polls here. And at number one, we have the USC Trojans who defeated Arkansas 38 to 10. At number two, we have the Iowa Hawkeyes who defeated Mont Montana 27 to 13. At number three, we have the Texas Longhorns who beat North Texas 52 to seven. At number four, we have the Michigan Wolverines who defeated Vanderbilt 43 to 10. At number five, we have the Louisville Cardinals uh, who beat University of Kentucky 20 to 10. At number six, we have the Miami Hurricanes who beat the FSU 31 28. At number seven, we have the LSU Tigers who beat uh, UL 34 to 13. At number eight, we have the Virginia Tech Hoagies who defeated uh, Northeast 56 to seven. At number nine, we have the Ohio State Buckeyes who defeated NIU 30 to 22. At number 10, we have the Tennessee Volunteers who lost to California 42 to 25 in an upset. At number 11, we have the Florida State Seminoles who lost to Miami 31 to 28. At number 12, we have the Georgia Bulldogs who lost, oh, actually, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry, they won to Western Kentucky 45 to seven. I was about to say, how do you lose to Western Kentucky? At number 13, we have the Purdue Boilmakers uh, who beat Indiana State 59 to seven. At number 14, we have the Oklahoma Sooners who lost to UAB in an upset. They lost 28 to 23, man, that's, that's scary to look at. At number 15, we have the Boston College Eagles who beat Central Michigan 24 to 17. At number 16, we have the Boise State Broncos who beat CSUS. I don't know what school that is. They beat them 40 to 21. At number 17, we have the Arizona State Sun Devils who beat NIU 77 to seven. 
At number 18, we have the Auburn Tigers who beat Washington State 17 to 13. At number 19, we have the Virginia Cavaliers who defeated Pitt 28 to 22. At number 20, we have the Florida Gators who lost to the University of Southern Miss in an upset. They lost uh, 15 to 10. At number 21, we have the UTEP Miners who beat San Diego State 23 to 20. At 22, we have the Cal Golden Bears who are now ranked after defeating Tennessee 42-25. At 23, we have the Texas A and Aggies, who are now ranked after defeating Citadel 45-0. At 24, we have another uh, team that, that is now ranked. Uh, we have the Colorado Buffaloes, who defeated Montana State 41-0. And then at 25, we have Utah, who defeated UCLA 34-10. Taking a look at the additional details here, we have Pittsburgh, Alabama, Southern Miss, New Mexico, and Colorado State. And the teams that were dropped out was number 23, Pitt, number 16, Alabama. Oh, okay, I was thinking, like, where's Alabama? Uh, maybe I thought I passed them, but they just got kicked out. And then we have number 25, Georgia Tech, and then we have number 21, Texas Tech. Those teams have been dropped out of the top 25. So this week, guys, we are playing the Tulsa Golden Hurricane, who are 1-0 so far this year. When it comes to their injured players, they have Holmes, their cornerback, who's out for this season. In their last game, they were able to beat Austin 24-17. When it comes to their offensive leaders, they have Price, who's leading in passing with 18 completions out of 38 attempts for 255 yards, two touchdowns, and three interceptions. When it comes to rushing, they have Bonet with 22 attempts, 183 yards, 8.3 average, one touchdown and he's averaging 183 yards per game when it comes to receiving they have Mott I think Monty Monty I don't know if I pronounced that he has nine receptions for 177 yards 19.7 average two touchdowns and 177 yards per game taking a look at their defensive leaders they have McCutch McCutcheon who's leading a tackle with uh, 11 and he's also leading in sacks with two and then for interceptions we have Bailey who's leading with one interception this year so that's going to do it for the team information for the Golden Hurricane I'll see you guys out there on the field So here we are guys at BYU to start off our first home game of our dynasty. It's going to be first and 10 at the 37. Johnson hands it off to Session and Session gets brought down. It's going to be second and 10 for BYU. Johnson steps back, rolls off to the left, sees Whitworth. Whitworth with the catch. And it's going to be a first and 10 at the 49. Good job for Whitworth for making that catch. And it's going to be a flag down the play by number 90 for encroachment. You got to pay attention to the ball, man. Now it's going to be first and five for BYU. Session has it. Juke move. I don't know why I juked. I didn't have to do that, but it's going to be second and four. One yard gain. Okay, not bad. Not bad at all. Okay, option play. Johnson hands off the session, and he gets brought down behind the line of scrimmage. A six-yard loss. It's going to be third and ten. Johnson. Steps back, rolls off to the right, tries to find somebody, sees Whitworth, and Whitworth couldn't make the catch. We're going to go three and out. It's going to be first and ten for Tulsa. Price hands off to Bonet. Bonet gets brought down. Wow, they have an impact player by Bonet as well. That's crazy, but he's a running back. It's going to be second and seven after a three-yard pickup for Tulsa. They're going to head off to Bonet again. It looks like that was the same play. It's going to be third and nine now. Can they get the first down? Price steps back, throws it, and I don't know who he was throwing it to, but it's going to be a first and 10 for BYU at the 46. Johnson rolls off to the left, sees Bonet, Bonet with the catch, and he collided with that defender there. <laughs> it's going to be first and 10 with only a minute left in the first quarter. 
Play action. Johnson rolls off to the right. Sees Whitworth, and Whitworth couldn't make the catch. That looked like that was defense pass interference, but whatever. Now it's going to be second and ten. We're going to hand off to Session. Session has it. Can he get a touchdown? Juke move. Breaks the tackle, and he hurdles in for a touchdown. A 27-yard touchdown run for Session. An amazing play right there because I thought he was, gonna, he was either, excuse me, he's either going to get knocked out of bounds or get tackled at the goal line. See here, stiff arm, that amazing stiff arm, and we scored. And now it's going to be first and 10 for Tulsa. Price throws it to Dixon, their impact player, and he gets brought down. It's going to be second and eight, a two-yard pickup on the play. Price steps back again, throws it across the middle, and Johnson makes the catch. A diving catch, but they gave me that weird tackle animation. It's going to be first and ten with only eight seconds to go in the first quarter. Play action. Price throws it. Incomplete pass. And it's going to be second and ten with only two seconds to go in the first quarter. Price throws it, and I should have got that pick. But the wide receiver was able to catch it, and that's going to do it for the end of the first quarter with the score, BYU 7, Tulsa 0. And now it's first and 10 for Tulsa as they start at the 37. Bonet has it. And he gets brought down. I don't know why we're having trouble uh, bringing him down, but it's going to be second and six. Bonet has it. He has plenty of blockers, and that's going to be six. Man, oh, man. How do we let that happen? That's going to be first and ten for BYU. Option play. Late pitch, and Session gets met behind the line of scrimmage. It's going to be second and 12, a two-yard loss on that one. Johnson rolls off to the left. Trying to find somebody. See Session, and Session makes the catch. Hurdles, and he has open room. Can he get a touchdown? He's at the 10. No one can stop him, and that's going to be a touchdown for BYU as Dallas Johnson breaks the uh, record for the longest passing touchdown with 76 yards. Man, I don't think he broke the longest passing touchdown. I think it was just the longest pass. But anyway, we did get a touchdown off that session. Did amazing work by hurdling over the defender, trying to get to him. And you see here, we scored a touchdown, man. Easy as that, man. And session now has two touchdowns in this one. Now it's going to be first and 10 for Tulsa. Price steps back. Throws it, and that's going to be an incomplete pass. It's going to be second and 10 now. Price steps back again, throws across the middle, and John Joyce with the big hit to knock it out of the wide receiver's hands. It's going to be third and 10. Price trying to find somebody. Throws it downfield, and Dixon makes the one-handed catch over two defenders. It's going to be first and 10 for Tulsa. Price steps back, tries to find someone once again. Throws it, and incomplete pass. Incomplete pass on that one. It's going to be second and 10. They only have two minutes and 20 seconds to go in this uh, second quarter. They're going to hand off to Bonet, and no one can stop Bonet, and we finally bring him down. He has 58 yards so far in this game. Price throws it and incomplete pass. It looked like a little bit of confusion on that play. You see the quarterback and the wide receiver is like, hey, you threw it to the wrong person. I didn't make that mistake. You did. Whatever. <laughs> Second and goal. <laughs> play action. Tries to find someone. And Brown. Oh, man. You almost had a pick, man. It's going to be third and goal now. And broken play. And cross. What? A flag? For what? Either that was holding or pass interference. But I'm, I'm telling you, it's a pass interference. <laughs> it's a pass interference flag there. It's going to be first and goal, man. That would have been three and out. Well, actually, they would have kicked a field goal. But it's going to be first and goal for Tulsa. Two yards to go. And we're going to bring down Bonet. It's going to be second and goal. Hands it off to Bonet on the toss play. And Bonet gets brought down a yard shy of the end zone. It's going to be third and goal. We need a stop here. We need to stop here. Hands off to Bonet. And Bonet gets in for six. And it's going to be 14-14. 
Can we score before the end of the second quarter? Session gets tackled behind the line of scrimmage. <laughs> we need to do better. Where's my offensive line? Second and 16. Johnson rolls out to the right. Sees how how makes the catch and he gets knocked over. Incomplete pass. It's gonna be third and 16. Johnson rolls out to the right. Sees Thomas. And you gotta make that catch, man. The defender was a little bit behind. Wait, he was in front of you a little bit, so you couldn't make that catch. It's going to be first and 10 for Tulsa now. Can they get a touchdown before the end of the second quarter? They're going to hit off to Dixon, and Dixon gets met behind the line of scrimmage. A two-yard loss in that one. It's going to be second and 12. Only 20 sec uh, 27 seconds left. Throws it, and I could have got that pick. It's going to be third and 12. Price. Oh, I thought he was going to run with it. Fooled me. It's tipped and Campanella. Did I pronounce that right? Campanella makes the catch off a tip play. And they're going to rush their offense. They only have 12 seconds to go on this one. Price throws it. And it's going to be intercepted by Brown. Brown makes the interception. He would have had two if he got that one earlier. But good job for Brown on that play. Man, I wish he... Got that interception earlier, because he would have had two. You know, we would we would not be in this situation right now. But anyway, that's gonna do it, guys. It's gonna be halftime with the score of 14 to 14. First and 10 now for Tulsa. Price hands it off to Bonet, and Bonet gets brought down. And it's gonna be a two-yard gain for Bonet. Price hands it off to Bonet again, right there, and John stop. Joyce was able to get to Bonet. A two-yard loss is going to be third and ten. Price throws it, and Brown, come on, you got to get those interceptions. Well, interception, you got to get that. Johnson steps back, rolls out to the left, tries to find someone. Throws it, and how makes the catch. Wait for Dallas Johnson to be patient and wait for how to cut up field. It's going to be first and 10 now for BYU. We're going to hit off the session, and he gets met behind the line of scrimmage. It's going to be second and 12. Johnson rolls out to the left. See, what? Who are you throwing it to? It's going to be third and 12 now. That's not like Johnson to throw passes like that off target. That's weird. Okay, Johnson rolls out to the right this time. Sees Whitworth. Whitworth makes the catch, and that will be six for BYU. And that is Dallas Johnson's second passing touchdown of the day. And good job for Whitworth right there, man. You look at that. You can see, like, he mossed two defenders. Look at this catch. Made the catch. No one can stop him. You know, his character, it looks like he's a tight end, but this guy is actually a wide receiver. And he has a low overall. He has like a 70-something overall. I think 76. But anyway, it's going to be first and 10 for Tosa. Price steps back. Throws it. And Bane, you got to get the interception. What are we doing out there on defense? Second and 10. Price throws it across the middle. And it's going to be intercepted by Jones. Jones going to cut up field, trying to get a pick six, but he gets tackled. Good job by the left outside linebacker. He's doing good this season, having six tackles. It's going to be first and ten. We got to capitalize on this. We're going to hand off the session. Session gets brought down. Two-yard gain on the play. Johnson. Tries to find someone, sees how, how makes the catch, and he fumbles the football. How do you fumble? How is that possible? What are you doing? You got to hold on to it as soon as you make the catch. You got to hold on to it. It's going to be first and 10 now for Tulsa at the six, man. We could have capitalized on that, man. First and 10. Price steps back, throws it, and bad pass right there. It's going to be second and 10. And on second and 10, Price, that's back again. We're trying to get a safety here, and good job for Brown to break that up. It's going to be third and 10. Man, Brown's all over the place. Third and 10. And throws it downfield, and nothing going for that play. It's going to be first and 10 for BYU now. Ball at the 44. Johnson steps back, rolls up to his left, sees Miller. Miller with the catch. And it's going to be first and 10.
We got to score here. At least get a field goal. Hands off the session. Spin move. And he gets brought down. Okay. Two-yard gain on that play. And looks like there's a flag on the play. Is it an encroachment? No. They're going to say it's a false start on the offense. It's going to be second and 13. Johnson. Throws across the middle. And that was that looked like that was defense pass interference. Can we get him? Okay, we got Foster. Okay. That looked like it was defense pass interference. Because Bonet slowed down and I couldn't get in front and where the target was. So it was like an e easy interception for the defense. Anyway, it's gonna be first and ten. They're gonna hand off to Bonet, and Bonet gets brought down. And that's gonna be the end of the third quarter with the score 21-14. We have plenty of opportunities to be ahead by at least three possessions, but we just can't capitalize. It's going to be second and six. Price steps back, throws it. Look at that. Another opportunity. Handy could have got the interception. And Tulsa, they are three, uh, three and six when it comes for uh when it comes to, excuse me, third down conversions. They're gonna hand off to Bonet, and Bonet goes downfield. And they're going to get in for an easy six. No, Bonet was able to get brought down. Good job for Handy to bring him down. And Bonet just broke the longest rushing <clears throat> rushing uh, right there with 78. Man, I was in the middle of talking and looking at the play. And I was like, man, that's messed up, man. I wasn't paying attention. Anyway, it's going to be first and goal. We need to stop here. Bonet has it, and we're going to push him into the end zone. It's going to be first and 10 for BYU. Johnson steps back, rolls to the left, and I threw another interception. I did not see that player there, and Smith gets brought down. <sighs> another interception by Dallas Johnson. Man, oh man, I need to work on my QB vision. It's going to be first and 10 now, the 31 for Tulsa. Price throws it, and incomplete pass overshot it there. It's going to be second and 10. Price throws it, and Coleman with the catch, and McKinley was able to bring him down. It's going to be third and four, and now Tulsa is four and seven when it comes to third down conversions. Price. Throws across the middle. Thank goodness he didn't catch it. He overthrew it. But now it's going to be fourth and four as they get set for the field goal. A 42-yard field goal kick, and the kick is up. And the kick is good. Man, we have to win our first game, home game of the dynasty, man. It's going to be first and ten now for BYU. Johnson, come on. Do not throw a pick. Bonet's open. Good catch. He was wide open. And it's going to be first and 10 at the 50 for BYU. Johnson again. Steps back. And good job for tossing it. I tried to throw it away, but it's going to be second and 10 now. Johnson rolls out to the right this time. Session makes the catch. Spin move. And he gets brought down. Good job for Session. First and 10 now at the 23. Hand off the session. He's going to go up the middle. Breaks free. And he's going to get brought down, man. Session, come on, man. I need you right now in crunch time. You have to come up clutch right now. Come on. First and goal at the nine. Session again. And he gets brought down a few yards on the play. You can see he's slowing down. That's what I like about this game. If you use your players too much, they start to get tired. Like they can't do anything. But now it's going to be third and goal. We get stopped. <clears throat> and it's going to be uh, spotted at the five. Session has it. He's running slow as heck. Juke move though, and he gets in for six. I know I over, I'm overdoing it with Session, but I need to win this game. Good job by Session for running it in. That's his second rushing touchdown of the game, his third in total. Look how slow he's moving. That's what I like about this game. Good job, man. Good job by Session. So now it's gonna be first and 10 for Tulsa with only 42 seconds left to go in this game. Price steps back, throws to the Johnson. Johnson makes a catch. He's going to cut up field, and he finally gets knocked out of bounds. Man, we should have tackled him a long time ago, but it's going to be first and 10 at the 34 for Tulsa. Price steps back, throws across the middle. Dixon makes the catch. That should have been intercepted, but look at that. Now they're at the 16, first and 10. We got to get a stop here. 
Hands off to Bonet. Bonet's trying to fight for some yards, and he's finally brought down. A four-yard pickup on the play. Price steps back, tries to find someone, throws it to his impact player, Dixon, who makes the catch. Breaks two tackles, hurdles, and that's going to be a touchdown. What in the world was that? I know he's an impact player, but there's no way a guy can break two tackles, hurdle, and then score. Look at this. A lob pass, one-handed catch, breaks two tackles, hurdles, and then a touchdown? No way. The AI is crazy on this game. Anyway, it's going to be first and 10 for BYU. With only 15 seconds left to go in this one. Johnson steps back, rolls off to his left, sees how. How makes the catch. And he's going to get in for a first down. Let's go. First and 10 at the 42, with only nine seconds left to go in this game. Johnson steps back, rolls off to his left, sees Thomas, and I saw Whitworth open. I kind of panicked on that one. It's going to be second and 10, and possibly the last play of the game. Johnson throws it to Hal. He has a step. But it's overthrown, guys. And that's going to do it for the end of the game with the score 31 to 28. What a terrible way to lose our first home game of the dynasty, man. <sighs> the game just went crazy, man. How did Tulsa get that last touchdown? But anyway, guys, we're going to take a look at we're going to take a look, excuse me, at the lag on lock player of the game. We have number 23, Corey Bonet, the senior halfback who had 14 carries for 150 yards and three touchdowns, man. How did we allow 150 rushing yards? That's ridiculous. Anyway, guys, that's going to do it for this one. Let's go ahead and take a look at the game stats. So that's going to be the end of the game, guys. Uh, what a terrible defeat. You know, uh, congratulations. You have just finished number one classic game of all time. I don't care about that. We still lost. And we lost over some BS. You know what I'm saying? How the heck did that wide receiver break two tackles and then hurdle for a touchdown? But, you know, it is what it is, man. This game is crazy. So, guys, take a look at the game stats. The score was 31 to 28. When it comes to first downs, we had 11. Uh, Tulsa had 10. Total offense, they had 320. We had 345. When it comes to rushing, they rushed 14. 14 times, we got 150 yards. We rushed 14 times as well, but we got 42 yards. When it comes to passing, they went 10 for 28 and scored one touchdown. We went 10 for 20 and scored two touchdowns. Looking at passing yards, uh, we had 303, they had 170. No team was sacked today. When it comes to third down conversions, uh, they were four for eight, we were two for four. Tulsa was in the red zone three times and scored all three of those times. We were in the red zone one time, we scored a touchdown. Looking at turnovers, they had two turnovers, we had three. We fumbled the ball once and lost it, and uh, they threw two picks and we threw two picks as well. And then total yards, uh, they had 436, we we had 500 and then in time possession they had 746 we had 814 so now guys we're gonna take a look at individual stats now and number 12 Dallas Johnson he had a 190.3 QB rating he had 10 completions out of 20 attempts for 303 yards two touchdowns two interceptions and a 50 completion percentage taking a look at rushing Nate Sessions had 42 yards today averaging three and he scored two touchdowns today so not bad for session Taking a look at receiving, number 10, Michael Howell had three receptions for 72. Nate Sessions had two receptions for 103 yards. Zach Bonet, our impact player, had two receptions for 57 yards. David Whitworth had two receptions for 52. And Corey Miller had one reception for 19. Looking at receiving touchdowns, Nate Session uh, got a receiving touchdown today. And David Whitworth, he also had a touchdown today. Defensively, number 91, Kenneth Golden uh, led our team attacks with four and also Eric Jones he had four tackles today when it comes to tackles for loss we have Joyce Golden Rutledge and Jones they all recorded a tackle for loss taking a look at interceptions number 34 Jason Brown the junior quarterback got a pick today and Eric Jones a senior left outside linebacker got a pick today as well so now guys taking a look at the NCAA players of the week for week three we have number 34, Houston, the senior redshirt halfback out of Alabama. 
as they defeated Vanderbilt 37 to 7. He had 33 carries for 228 yards, uh, resulting in four touchdowns, and he had 32 receiving yards. Then defensively, we have number 11 Pearson, the senior red shirt, right outside linebacker from the UTEP Miners. As they defeated Texas Tech 31 to 13, he had four tackles, a forced fumble, and a touchdown. So now, guys, taking a look at the Mountain West Conference Players of the Week for Week Three. We have number 15, Hughes, the senior redshirt quarterback out of TCU. As they defeated 1AA West, I don't know what school it is, but they were able to defeat them 52 to zero. He went 13 for 19 for 183 yards, six carries, and he totaled four touchdowns. Defensively, we have number 98, Nelson, the junior defensive tackle from Utah. As they defeated NAU 41 to zero, he had five tackles, two of those tackles being for loss, a sack, and a touchdown. Man, I still can't believe we lost that game. But anyway, guys, in the next video, we'll be playing the Boston College Eagles. They are 2-0 so far this year. They have a B-plus overall, a B-minus offense, and a B-plus defense. So if you like this video, if you'd like to see more, please like, comment, and subscribe. Let me know how I'm doing down in the comments section below, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Take care.